Welcome to Alex G's Aquarium, everybody. Today, I want to give an update on the 720 gallon aquarium. It's been over two and a half months since I've done an update on my tanks, and I think each one of them deserves to get some time well spent talking about what's been going on. And I want to start off with the 720 gallon as there's some good news going on in it and bad news as always this hobby is full of both and I start off with the bad news which isn't that bad but things that happen uh, one of the orange tail damsels of the original three that I purchased uh, is no longer in the tank it disappeared one day and I'm pretty much presumed that it has died at this point it's been over a month since I've seen it unfortunately I'm not sure what exactly happened but these things do happen. It could have been an age thing. It could have just been a fight, wrong place, wrong time. Uh, who knows? The rest of the fish in the tank are all acting well, so I didn't see any signs of disease going on that, that could have stricken that fish. And I hadn't had fish in a couple of months when that one disappeared. I did attempt to add three more damsels to the tank. Unfortunately, that too did not go very well as the other two orange tailed damsels and a little bit, the, in a, and in a bit, the purple pseudochromus are very territorial, hold their rocks pretty sacred to them. When I tried to introduce new damsels, they got pushed out of the rocks, which is a behavior I've seen. It usually takes about a week for fish that are, you know, getting aggression shown towards them to be allowed to come into the whole reef rock work and, and get into the social group. Unfortunately, though, what I think happened is those damsels were pushed up to the surface in the corners. That's where the porcupine puffer likes to hang out. And the porcupine puffer is really a nocturnal fish. It's out and about during the day, but it's also out a lot at night. And as a matter of fact, it's out all night. And I think what happened is those damsels were up at the surface, weren't hiding in the rocks, and they just became an easy meal. In part, I blame myself. I knew this could happen, but I don't blame the puffer. The puffer's just doing what the puffer does and I can't fault the fish for that. I did, however, learn a valuable lesson, and if I try to add some more damsels or pseudochromus in the future, I think I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it, but I might try to make some artificial structures in the tank to allow new fish to come in and get acclimated and accepted into the reef part of the tank and the rock work before I attempt to remove that temporary territory. That way it gives them a place to hide without the other fish being able to kind of get at them. But we'll see if I do that. It's, it's going to be a while before I add any new fish to this tank. On the new fish front though, I have added some new fish since my last update and I want to talk about some of the ones that were added during that update. On the positive side of things, uh, the angelfish that I added back in September are all doing well. The Navarcus angel, the emperor angel, and the blueface angel. Really getting along and integrated well into the community. And I couldn't really ask for a more harmonious group of angels. They all seem to get along great. There's a little bit of pushing every now and then, but it's nothing major to worry about. You're going to see that with most tanks of fish when they start to get a lot of them in similar species. And recently, I added two more fish at the same time as the damsels. These did not get eaten. Uh, and that was a small baby clown trigger. I love these little guys and I've had a couple of them now. Uh, I had one that just mysteriously died uh, right at the beginning of keeping this tank. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I lost another one that I had for several months when I had disease getting in this tank about a year ago and it wiped out a few fish including that one. So I got another one, hopefully third time to try with these little guys. Uh, just a little pig and integrated right into the tank. And this little clown trigger is not afraid of anything including the puffers. It actually tries to steal food off of the tongs for the puffers which you'd never think that little guy would get in there with a porcupine puffer that could probably swallow it whole. But that little guy will go in there and start ripping chunks of shrimp off without any issue. And it's just hilarious to see that little guy. So I know he won't be a little guy for very long, but it's great to see that little guy in there right now. And he's real active and swimming around the tank constantly. He's just always out and about. I love having these little guys. Triggers are a really fun fish to have. Uh, at least a lot of species of them, some of them not so much, but the clown triggers I really do enjoy. 
I also got one more fish and that is a big orange shoulder tang. I've got a whole bunch of different tanks that I'd like to add to the 480 and the 720. And I talked to my good friend Steve at Brief Plus and I gave him a list of tanks that I would like to get into my tank. I need to add a group of at least three to the reef at once since there's already four and I want to try and cut aggression down. Unfortunately, when he went to the wholesaler, he wasn't able to find all the tangs I was looking for, but he called and said, hey, there's this beautiful orange shoulder tang there. Would you like to get it? And I said, you know what? Yep, I'll go ahead and get it because I can add it to the 720 gallon tank. I want to add tangs here too. Orange shoulders typically aren't a really aggressive tang, at least in my experience. Might not be the same for everybody out there. I went ahead and added this guy in and the fish has been doing really well. It's been a couple of weeks since that tang and the clown trigger have been added and both of them are doing really well. There's one other addition that some folks have been watching me for a while might notice in the background and that's my checkerboard wrasse is now in the 720 gallon tank. The checkerboard wrasse was just a tiny little guy when I got him just a couple of inches long. I added that fish to the reef tank as I knew that checkerboard wrasses get about 10 inches long, I knew that wrasse could not be a permanent resident of the reef tank. Now, unfortunately, as this wrasse gets bigger, it will start to pick on more invertebrates, snails, uh, potentially the clams, the cleaner shrimp, and it might start flipping corals over in search of pods and other crustaceans. And what I ultimately found with this wrasse is that it had outgrown the Melanaris wrasse already. It was starting to get a little bit more in the way of aggressive tendencies just because it became the big wrasse in the tank and the yellow flank fairy wrasse and the Melanaris that used to kind of push it around a little bit were suddenly faced with this monster that was bigger than them. So that was my first sign that it was time for this wrasse to go. I also noticed it would pick at snails periodically and for those of you that know I research bioluminescence and monitor my tank's activity at night, I had seen a bit of a decline in my bioluminescent activity in the sand at the same time this fish was starting to get larger. And I'm not sure if that's the reason why, but I did notice that the checkerboard wrasse love to pick up big mouthfuls of sand periodically and chew things up. So it was eating some kind of life in the sand, not sure exactly what, but Again, that's something that I was kind of watching out for and I knew it was time for the, this fish to get moved. And that's something to consider when you buy marine fish is how big are they gonna get? I buy fish that I have adequate tank size for. So it was a move that was inevitable. Now, I couldn't just simply move the checkerboard into the 720 gallon tank as this fish likes to bury itself in the sand at night and I already had two other wrasses that bury themselves. I have the clouded wrasse, and I also have my red cigar wrasse. Both of these fish love to bury themselves at night when they go to sleep. And I had a little Tupperware bowl that was, you know, this size for those two fish. Now, I never saw any issues with the two of them in that bowl sleeping, but I know that, you know, the red cigar wrasse is getting a little bigger, and with the addition of the checkerboard wrasse, there was no way that I was going to be able to use that little bowl of sand. It, honestly, it didn't look all that great. Went and got my quarter inch acrylic out and made a new tray to put sand in in the bottom of the 720 gallon tank. I measured out an area where I could cut it to be rather long, about six, six and a half inches wide and about three to three and a half inches tall. I also drilled a few extra holes in the top of it as a 36 inch deep tank, I can't touch the bottom from the top of the tank unless I wanna, you know, put a snorkel mask on. And I don't think that'd be a good idea with my puffers as they might try to take a chunk out of my face or ear and that just doesn't sound very appealing. So I had to come up with a way to be able to get that sand tray out in the event that sand needs to be clean or if I ever have to move a rash that buries itself for whatever reason, I could pick up the tray they sleep in. So I built this tray, I got it in the tank, left it there, ultimately decided I need to catch this checkerboard wrasse, which I thought this is going to be a piece of cake because if this wrasse buries itself at night, I did this with the red cigar wrasse, I watched it at night, 
and when it buried itself I took a couple nets started slowly scooping sand away net to net and I caught the red cigar wrasse within about five minutes easy I figured same thing with the checkerboard wrasse or so I thought the checkerboard wrasse I did the same thing I watched it at night as the lights went out as a matter of fact I was on a live stream either a Murphy's Aquatics or a DM's Reef or Reefing with O. I, I can't even remember whose live stream I was on, but I was like just constantly moving the camera. And I was like, I'm waiting for this rest to bury itself. When it did, I was like, all right, gotta go. This rest buried itself right by the SPS rock structure and the reef tank, which isn't the best place to get to, but I figured I could. Well, I was wrong. I made two temps on two separate nights, and I must have dug out about 30 pounds of sand. I have no idea where this fish goes when it goes down to bury itself, but it is not below where it buries itself, and it is not within a 12 inch radius of where it buries itself, unless it was underneath a rock, which I wasn't going to attempt to move. I had to find a new way to catch this fish. I went to a fish trap. I didn't get any of this footage recorded as I was trying to do all kinds of maintenance at the same time. But I did find out that cleaning your gyre pumps and other pumps while you're watching a fish trap can be a little relaxing. Unfortunately, after two hours, this wrasse was the only fish that wouldn't go in the trap, which is typical. I uh, loaded the trap up with mysis shrimp and just waiting with the pull string to, to hit the trap door and literally every other fish in the reef tank except the checkerboard went in there which is funny because the last time I had the fish trap the checkerboard was going in and out of it like crazy in either case I was about to give up and right before I gave up I saw the checkerboard go in there with the Pangaea Cardinal I hit the drop hit the trap door got the wrasse out uh, the Pangaea Cardinal was a little less than happy the wrasse wasn't very happy and I went ahead and put the Bangai Cardinal back in the reef and entered the checkerboard wrasse into the 720 gallon tank. And I was concerned that the checkerboard wrasse might get beat up a bit. There are some more aggressive wrasses in this tank. And just adding one I thought could be a little bit of a risk. But I knew this fish was pretty big. It had a tray of sand. It could hide if necessary. And within a few hours of putting the checkerboard wrasse in, it was swimming around like nothing ever happened. Got accepted into the group with no aggression at all. As far as corals in the 720 gallon tank, I still got a couple of cold corals that are just kind of there. They haven't really been growing much, which isn't surprising because there's not a ton of light in here. The green cinellarias that are in here have grown a little bit. Again, not a ton of light. The Blue Ridge Coral, though, has started to take off and it's encrusting rock in front of itself. It actually has taken off in the last couple of months. So that's kind of nice to see that it's moving out and encrusting. And I did lower the lights down in this tank a bit. I haven't done a par reading to see where it's at. But I'm probably going to look at lowering the lights even more and maybe adjusting them a bit to see if I can't get a little bit more coral growth in this tank. The coralline algae has been growing great and the sea urchins are still doing good in here so no complaints there the puffers are still eating like pigs so i will say that the puffers have a lot more competition now when it comes to eating their meals i was giving them shrimp on tongs or clams on tongs however i was feeding them a larger meal just to kind of you know keep it away from some of the other fish that can't swallow that giant piece of food but would gladly take it away and run around with it which is all the wrasses in the tank because that's what they do but the puffers now have got a lot of competition on the tongs I lower those tongs in and literally almost every single fish uh, will come up to the tongs and start ripping on the shrimp the angels the rabbit fish the triggers the wrasses uh, even the pseudochromus come up to it sometimes and the damsels so the puffers have gotten a little overwhelmed trying to get their their meal. I will say that if the wrasses do get a hold of a big chunk of shrimp, generally they can't break it apart to eat it. Eventually the dog face puffer will run them down and they'll give up on it and the dog face will come over and eat all of it, which is great because he doesn't get as much of a meal as the porcupine does. 
that porcupine will just suck that pole shrimp down on its side and it's still looking for food. Beyond that, the tank itself is doing good. The rock structure's been holding up good. The PVC bottom's been doing good. I haven't noticed any other kinds of issues or problems in the tank. I still make sure about once a month I clean the strainers on my DIY overflows. They've been holding up and performing pretty nice. I know that they're not black like the rest of the back of the tank and I just don't even worry about it. It's, it's just not a concern of mine. It, it's got quite a way of algae and such growing on it so maybe at some point in the future I'll do something with those but for now I, it's just not a concern of mine. And believe it or not I have a cleaner shrimp still in this tank as well. It has not been eaten. I have had one originally that I tried out and I added a couple others. I don't see the other two but I do see the one and it comes out during feeding time. The fish do come up to it and use it as a cleaning station. That is one other bit of good news in this tank as well. That's the update on the 720 gallon aquarium. I'm going to get an update together for the 480 gallon reef as well. But I figure both these tanks deserve a little bit more time to talk about how they have been doing. If you have any comments or questions on the 720 gallon tank, go ahead leave it down below. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. Let me know you like the content. And if you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching everybody, and I'll see you on the next video.